Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another uh, Hobo, Hobo Tech, Tech News, News product review. Blue Eddy is known for using weird cryptic naming conventions for their products. In fact, we've seen several AC200 models over the years, starting with the original AC200, then the AC200P, and finally the AC200 Max. But wait, there's more! Meet the new AC200L, a direct upgrade to the AC200 Max. I have no clue what the L stands for, and the letter L actually comes before P in the alphabet, so shouldn't this be a downgrade of sorts? Who knows? There's only one thing that really matters. Is it any good? Let's find out. This new AC200L uses a 2048 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery rated 3000 cycles to 80% capacity. It's approximately 17 by 11 by 14 inches at around 62 pounds. As for the display, it's a standard Blue Eddy display we've seen in other recent releases. It shows input and output watts for both AC and DC, battery percent display with icon, time to charge and discharge, among other warning icons. As for the inverter, it packs a 2400 watt pure sign inverter with 420 amp outlets and a single TT30R 30 amp RV hookup. As for ways to charge, it can of course charge from AC wall power, no brick for this model. The charger is actually built in, so you only need this specialized cable. It can charge it up to 1400 watts, good for topping up in just under two hours. It can also handle 1200 watts of solar with the included MC4 adapter cable, so it allows you to use whatever solar panels you like. It can do up to 1200 watts between 12 and 145 volts, up to 15 amps, so a very wide range of voltage and a pretty high amps for a Blue Eddy. Most of them cut off at 10 or 12, this one can finally take 15. That will also allow you to top up the Blue Eddy from zero to 100 in just about two hours. And that depends, of course, on sun conditions. Now you can, in fact, charge with both AC and solar simultaneously for a combined 2,400 watts, and that'll allow you to charge the unit from zero to full in about an hour, so wickedly fast. And finally, of course, good old 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. So this, of course, supports 12 and 24 volts, just about like everyone else does. And of course, using this thing, it's gonna pretty much take all day long, up to 20 hours, and then about 10 hours if you're on 24 volts. As for 12 volt outputs, unlike its predecessor, this offers only a single 12 volt cigarette lighter style accessory socket, good for 10 amps, and this is regulated at 13.3 volts. As for USB output types, it sports a pair of 200 watt USB power delivery outputs and a pair of standard USB-A ports, good for charging up those dinosaurs. As for other outputs, this is the first Blue Eddy in history, in fact, I think the first solar generator by any major brand, to offer a 48 volt direct battery output. Blue Eddy does plan to offer several accessories for powering various things, including high amp 12 volt appliances. Unfortunately, none of that stuff's out yet. And unfortunately, this port also is protected by a data pin. So it's absolutely useless without those Blue Eddy accessories. Don't think you can just jump her into there and use it. You can't. I tried it. I'm going to cover that here in a bit. As for other features, this also does offer a 20 millisecond switching UPS mode. So unlike the AC200 Max that this replaces, this does have a built-in UPS. And that stands for uninterruptible power supply. That means if you have your appliances plugged into this and you have this plugged into the wall, say the power goes out, this will continue to power those sensitive electronics without a hiccup. It also supports remote access via both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth through the fantastic Blue Eddy app. It also offers true bi-directional battery expandability up to eight kilowatt hours through the single battery port on the side. And this battery port supports the B230 battery B300 and the upcoming B210 external batteries. This means bi-directional support with those batteries so it can charge and discharge those batteries. As for the warranty, Blue ID is offering a whopping five-year warranty on this product. And this is in fact UL2743 certified for portable power packs. And of course we took the AC200L here into my secret laboratory where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it including, yes of course, let's all say it together, a double-fisted bang, bang. battery capacity test.
As for the results of the DC battery capacity test, it scored 1,724 watt hours out of 2048 for a respectable 84%. As for the results of the AC battery capacity test, it scored a much better 1,870 watt hours out of 2048 for 91%. Now these numbers are average to above average for the industry and are very similar to results we've measured from other recent releases by Blue Eddy. Now on to the phantom load or parasitic drain test. Now this test, we actually leave the unit turned on in both DC and AC modes to see how much power does it waste just sitting there doing nothing turned on. Now as for DC consumption, I usually do a 12 hour test. This time I had things to do that day, so I let it run the entire 24 hours. So I got an exact result of 156 watt hours over 24 hours for the DC consumption test. As for the AC consumption, it used only 54 watt hours over four hour period, or about 324 watt hours over 24 hours. So if you left the AC inverter on on this product, it would last about five and a half days until the battery died. These are fairly good results and a bit above average compared to other products. Now I'm always asked how long is stuff gonna run on these products? Compensating for usable capacity, you can pause this chart that I'm gonna put up on screen. that will tell you approximately how long common appliances will run on this unit. Your sine wave check under load. I've had a lot of complaints that people don't like my little handheld oscilloscope, so I whipped this one out. I've had this one for a long time. I don't use it because it's a pain in the butt to hook up, but I'll do anything for you guys. The Blue Eddy AC200L is now running at 2400 watts under full load, and the sine wave looks really good. This is 60 hertz. It's still pretty smooth. Inverter capacity test, this is where we determine how hard can we push the inverter on this? The AC200L has a 2400 watt pure sign inverter. Let's see how far we can push it. So you can see right there we're running 2400 watts. I'm gonna go ahead and increase until it shuts off. Go 2600, 2800, 3000, and it shuts off at 3000. Let's go ahead and repeat that test. 28, 29, 3,000, and again, shuts off at 3,000. Next test is the sustained cooling or heat soak test where we push this thing at least its rated capacity for at least five minutes to see. Does it do anything crazy? Does it start smelling funny or smoking or drinking or calling up some other names or forgetting to take out the trash? That's a serious offense right there. Let's start off at 2,500 watts and see if it'll run for five minutes. Here we have 2,500 watts, started the timer, there's our oscilloscope still looking good. We'll come back in five minutes. It made it just over one minute at 2,500 watts before the inverter overloaded. So we're gonna have to knock this down to 2,400 and reset. We're at 2,400 watts. Timer's going, oscilloscope looks good. Let's come back in five minutes. And we're back and as you can see, we're still running at 2,400 watts for over five minutes. Sine wave still looks good. That means this test passes. How loud are the inverter fans at maximum from a meter away? 44 decibels is incredibly whisper quiet. This Blue Eddy, I'm really surprised, is probably the quietest Blue Eddy I've ever tested. They're supposed to be running maximum. I just ran this thing for five minutes at 2400 watts. The fans are just like, shh, that's it. So very impressive. Max charge rate test, this is where we determine how much power can we push into the AC200L? So we're gonna start with the DC test. We're gonna use our simulated solar, which is basically just a power supply that we can adjust the voltage on. So we're gonna do 12 volts like you would from a car, 24 volts, which you might do from a large RV or a semi truck or something with a 24 volt system or a solar panel that runs around 24 volts. We'll do 48 volts and then whatever the maximum that this supports. So we'll get to see in those different ranges, how much power can you put in? Then we'll also do an AC test to see how much AC power can we put in in the different modes. Okay, at 12 volts, we're doing eight amps, charging at 96 watts. That's typical because you don't wanna blow up your cigarette lighter in your car. So eight amps is about as safe as you can get. Let's go ahead and bump this up to 24 volts. Nope, it's still limiting you to eight amps, but now you can charge at 180 watts. So let's bump it up to 48 volts, which would be a 48 volt battery input or a pair of solar panels in series. This would be like a pair of 200 or 250 watt solar panels would 
pretty much require about 50 volts in series. Ah, now we're seeing that it is actually allowing 15 amps at 48 volts. There we go, 36 volts, it allows 15 amps for 500 watts of solar charging. Take it to 60 volts, still 15 amps, 870 watts of charging. So this Blue Eddy can take 145 volts of solar. So let's just go ahead and see where the upper limit is. We're continuing to go. It's still allowing 15 amps at 80 volts. We're now at 90 volts. Now the amps are finally coming down. It looks like the hard limit is 1200 watts of solar. Now allowing 10 amps at 1200 watts. So it is hard limited to 1200 watts, no matter how many volts you put in. But let's keep going, because it does say 145 volts is the upper limit. So here we are at 145 volts, eight and a half amps, still 1200 watts. Let's see what happens when we push it beyond its 145 volts. It should cut us off or do something. And there it goes, it cut us off. At 149 volts, it just stops charging. So this is a safety mechanism to prevent you from pushing in too much power, and there we have a DC error message. So this is what we wanna see, that means it is safe. Now, does it self-recover? Yes, it does. So if you give it proper voltage, even after it errors out, it automatically self-recovers, which again, this is what you wanna see in a good product. You don't have to babysit this stuff. If for some accidental reason that you go over the voltage, it just stops you from damaging the product, and then it will self-correct as soon as you lower the voltage. So we're all good here. That means it passed this test with flying colors. Onto the AC or mains charging. So we're gonna go ahead now and through the Blue Eddy app, there are three modes. There is standard, turbo, and silent. Let's start with silent mode. Okay, silent mode is 811 watts. Let's put it in standard mode. Standard mode is, you can see, 1209 watts. And let's put it in turbo mode. And in this case, it's showing about 1400 watts of charging. Oh, and if you're wondering if there's actually a difference in decibel rating between these, yes, the silent mode, you'll pretty much not hear the fans at all. But in standard and turbo, it sounds about the same to me. Um, the decibel reading is still like 44 decibels. It's like so quiet. Now, the only reason not to charge in turbo mode is say you're concerned about battery life, which you really shouldn't be on a lithium iron phosphate power station. This thing, maximum charge rate is gonna give you 3,500 cycles, easily 10 years. Everything else on this will break before the batteries die. So really don't stress over the cycle life of these batteries. Next question, can you charge it with AC grid power and solar at the same time? Well, we're charging it in turbo mode at 1,400 watts. Let's turn on the solar and find out. And yes, my lights get dark because I'm running this off, my whole lab off of an inverter. I'll cover that in a future video. So we're still charging it at 1400 watts from the wall. And now we're only limited to 662 watts from the fake solar array. Okay, so I have simulated solar on. We are pulling 1200 watts from solar. Let's see what happens when the grid kicks back in. All right, now here's your answer. We're pulling in maximum solar at 1200 watts and we're charging from AC at 1216. So that is just about 2400 watts combined. So you can in fact charge this thing ridiculously fast from combined solar and AC at 2400 watts. That means you can charge this battery from zero to full in less than an hour. And charging something this large in less than an hour is pretty ridiculous, but you can do it. Now the AC200L, just like a lot of power stations nowadays, does actually have a uninterruptible power supply or UPS mode feature, where it allows you to plug a computer or some other electronics into this while it's plugged into the wall, so if the electricity goes out, your electronics will continue to run. So I have a laptop here, an old laptop, no battery in it. So there is no cheating here. There's no battery in the laptop, so it acts like a desktop. Running into the inverter, which is being powered through this box to the wall. And I also have the oscilloscope down here just to show you what is happening when I hit the switch. So I got the computer running. Now, anything under 25 watts doesn't seem to register on here as output, so keep that in mind. And there we go, I got the CPU running. Now it's registering 20 something watts. I decided to go ahead and launch Firefox in the laptop. Um, so it is doing CPU stuff right now, so we'll go ahead and let it do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit this button. What that's gonna do is cut off the grid power to this machine. We'll see if the laptop continues to run. Watch the waveform here. So place your bets. Three, two, one. The laptop did stay running even under load. Now you can't see it because the screen's black. 
Now I always do this test with the battery charging at the same time. You don't do this test with it 100% because that's not always what happens on a blackout. If the power goes out multiple times, your battery is going to be discharged. So there we have it. It's running Firefox. We'll do it again. Three, two, one. You can see here the waveform is still very steady and everything looks good. So that passes this test. Next on the agenda is the new 48 volt 8 amp output on the AC200L. This is the first 48 output on any solar generator that I'm aware of. So I have a meter hooked up to it and you can see it is actually outputting 51.6 volts DC. Now I did try to hook something up to this to pull some power out of it to test to see can it do 8 amps. And when I try to pull anything out of there, the voltage drops into the dirt. So my suspect is this is a three pin configuration. I just have two pins hooked up. I'm betting the third pin has something to do with the way that it's supposed to detect something that's plugged into it and then allow that power to come out. And I don't want to goof around with it and potentially short it out because one of the things I found out is you don't even have to have the DC on in order for this port to output power. So it's kind of like a direct connection to the battery. I don't want to really mess with it, but at least we do know the voltage is 51.6 volts and that's at 94% charge. So it's probably closer to 52 when it's fully charged. But that's all the further we can go with a 48 volt port until Blue Eddy actually sends me the accessories that are supposed to plug into this. The one and only 12 volt output on the AC200L is regulated at 13.3 volts. And we're gonna go ahead and try to pull 10 amps from it and see, can it pull 10 amps? And there you have it, 10 amps at 12.6 volts. USB check. The 200L does have a pair of 100 watt USB-C power delivery outputs. Let's see, we have them plugged into two power bin power banks, which can take easily 100 watts of USB each. We're getting 90 and 92 watts input respectively, a total of 183 watts output from the Blue Eddy. That's a little on the short side, but still considered close enough to 100 watts to pass this test. Note a few cost cutting moves by Blue Eddy. The 200L does not have any USB-A quick charge ports, just standard ports for charging up your dinosaurs. And there is no wireless charging pad on top like you would expect like they have on other Blue Eddy products. Again, we're trying to save a few bucks here to keep the cost down for you. Musician's favorite amp interference test. We're gonna do this a little differently from now on. We're gonna include three tests in this group. First is the amp interference test where we're determine audibly if you can actually hear noise coming from the inverter. Secondly, I'm going to use a, an AM radio and pass it in front and let you guys hear what that sounds like. Third and final, I did get this for free. That's why it's pink. It's an EMF meter and I will allow you to see what the EMF coming off of this is. So we're gonna make these tests a little more elaborate from now on, just because people always ask me for all this extra information, I figure we'll throw them in. So all I need to do is push this red button. It will take AC power from the Blue Eddy and send it into the PV amp. And then we're gonna find out, is it clean or is it dirty? Place your bets. Three, two, one. All right, it sounds pretty good. So there is like a minor, minor buzz in the background. I don't think it would really bother too many people, but it is minor. I can try moving this around a little bit. It doesn't make any difference. People always ask me, if you move it, if you put it further away, does it make a difference? No, it never makes any difference moving it because this is coming from the power from the inverter. It's not because there's a transformer nearby that's causing it. I got this on a blank station. I'll put it on AM. Now we'll actually turn the inverter off first. All right, let's go ahead and turn on the AC200L. DC. USB. And AC. So there you have it, that gives you an idea of the AM radio interference. Now let's go ahead and go to the EMF testing. And I'm just gonna put it here, get a base reading. I have to understand that there's a lot of things going on in this room. I have Wi-Fi and boosters and all kinds of electronics in here. 
But fortunately, where the Blue Eddy is sitting and on this desk, I have my phone and everything away from it. My base reading is actually pretty low. The EF meter is on the left and the EMF meter is on the right. You can see it's a very low reading right now. So let me go ahead and turn on the AC200L. You'll see that it will bump up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the DC. Then the USB. And then the AC. The AC is going to cause everything to go up. And there we go. Still not too bad. It's reading about uh, 16 on the EMF, and we'll switch over to the electric fields. Of course, because this has an inverter and it's outputting AC power, the electric field is going to be somewhat high, and I'll show you. It does go pretty high by the inverter, and then if I turn everything off, it will pretty much go back down to normal. So it gives you an idea of the electric field and EMF of the Blue Eddy. Okay, for the Blue Eddy app, I've showed this in every Blue Eddy review in the last couple of years. It hasn't changed, it all looks the same. I'm not gonna review it again, but what I am gonna do is show you guys, the AC200L does actually have an extended UPS feature in it. It means it's somewhat adjustable depending on your needs. You can see here you have four modes, standard, PV or solar priority, and time control, and then you have a customized UPS feature. For example, customize, you can see it'll let you change the state of charge setting where it is effective, and you can turn on and off charging from the grid. You can turn on and off time of use. So say you want this to only charge from the grid at a certain time. You can actually go into this other screen and set up time periods where you want it to do what you want it to do. And here in PV priority, you can set the state of charge where you want the solar to be priority. Anything over 20% will charge with solar. And time control allows you to set up charging and discharging depending on time periods. And all these things are covered in detail in the manual, so I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time here, but do know that this does have a customizable UPS feature that a lot of other Blue Eddies don't have unless you spend a lot of money, like the AC300 and AC500 have these features. This is the newest Blue Eddy model that I'm aware of that has this customizable UPS feature. So what do I think about this new Blue Eddy AC200L? Well, I think it's a perfectly fine product and a long overdue upgrade for the AC200 Max. It does do everything it's supposed to do, and there are no real surprises. And that also means there's nothing really groundbreaking about it either. Blue Eddy does seem to have permanently done away with their famous touchscreen on all these new models, and that could be a good or a bad thing depending on your needs. If you hate apps, you probably like the touchscreen. If you hate the touchscreen, you probably love the app. One thing I can say about this screen is that it is much easier to read in daylight, and that's probably one of the main reasons why they switched over from the touchscreen besides the expense of it. Now, another thing to know is they did cut several corners on the AC200L to keep the cost down. That is, they removed the dual wireless charging pad, which is typically on the AC200 series. It's from all the way from the beginning up to the 200 max. It had a pair of 15 watt wireless charging pads. Nothing on the top of this one, so they pulled that out completely. The USB-A quick charge ports, those are also gone. The 5521 12 volt outputs, those are gone. And the dedicated 12 volt 30 amp output, which a lot of people love, is also gone. However, that's supposed to be replaced by an external box that's gonna come out of this 48 volt port eventually, but who knows when that's gonna come out. It's going to be an extra expense that would have just been built into the previous model. And last but not least, they nixed one of the two battery ports on the side. So instead of being able to plug two batteries directly into this, like you could with the AC200 Max, you can only plug in one battery. Now, some batteries themselves have two ports on them, like the B300 has two ports. So you can plug one B300 into this and then plug the second B300 into that battery. So you go this to a battery and then the battery to a battery. You can't do that with the B230, the smaller battery that would fit right on top of this because it only has one battery port. So you are limited on this to only one B230 battery where you would have two B230 batteries on the AC200 Max. Now, some of the things that the 200L has gained over the 200 Max is a true 20 millisecond UPS feature or uninterruptible power supply, a built-in 1200 watt wall charger, which is a big upgrade, both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth app support, which of course is great, 
and a 33% power upgrade to the Solar over the 200 Max. Seeing this is only 100 bucks more than the 200 Max when you use my code, it's really a no-brainer upgrade. And that probably explains why if you go to the Blue Eddy website, it's pretty hard to find the 200 Max. You have to really dig for it now, or it was prominently on their page before. It's pretty obvious now they are focusing on selling this over the old 200 Max. Product price, the 200L retails for only $14.99, which is actually pretty darn good for a two kilowatt power station with a 2,400 watt inverter. Of course, viewers of Hobotech won't be paying that. Blue Eddy has offered us an exclusive $100 off deal, dropping that price to only $13.99. This is only a hundred bucks more than the outgoing AC200 Max, so quite a deal. I also want to mention that Blue Eddy also has a Christmas promotion going on from now till December 25th, Christmas Day, where Blue Eddy is giving viewers of Hobotech an exclusive discount code globally on all the products until 1225 when you use the link and discount code in the description of this video. Now this discount code will not stack with the discount code for the 200L. They're separate codes. You got to use one or the other. Trust me, you're going to want to use the code for the 200L that knocks that 100 bucks off. Now as for recommended Solar Blue Eddy, of course, wants you to use their panels. However, since they include an MC4 adapter cable, it lets you use pretty much whatever panels you want because the built-in MPPT solar controller supports a very wide 12 to 145 volt range up to 15 amps. So that pretty much allows you to kind of go hog wild and use any kind of series parallel configuration you want to reach that magic 12 1200 watt limit on this product and 1200 watts of solar on this is quite a lot. You'll charge this in two hours under some pretty decent sun conditions. Now, if you're looking for solar panels, you can always check out hobotech.tv and go there. I do have recommendations for solar panels. So if you're interested in the AC200L, the link and discount code are in the description of this video below. I'm also going to put a link here at the bottom of the screen that you can type in manually along with a QR code. For those of you watching me on TV, you can scan it with your mobile device. It'll take you on over to the Blue Eddy store page where you can check out the Blue Eddy AC200L. Don't forget to use that special discount code in the description to knock a hundred bucks off this product. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box.